Good evening. Welcome to our Watch Night Service 2020. Thanking God for you tuning in to this service. Thanking God for this another year. I've been here for 16 years. And for the first 15 years, on December 31st, around the 10.30, 11 p.m. hour, this church would be packed. Bodies would be filling these pews. But um, it's an empty church on a Thursday night. Who would have known that as we celebrated the conclusion of 2019 and opened up this new decade of 2020, who knew that God had all of this in store for us? Who knew that on literally a year from now we would be having a worship service in an empty sanctuary. But even though you aren't here, we celebrate the fact that we are all joining together on this last day of the year of our Lord, 2020, celebrating what God has done. And even though some things haven't gone as expected, we still praising God and thanking God for who God is and how God has guided us through this year. And so my brothers and sisters, this is, and this will be a different kind of worship experience. I, I want you to make it personal for the next couple of hours as we leave out of this year into the new year. I, I want you to just reflect upon everything that God has done in your life, your, your total life, the entirety of it, and then more so this year. I want you to praise God. I, I want some tears to be shed, tears of sorrow, but also tears of joy and gladness. And as we, the virtual voices and the band and myself, as, as we share with you this worship experience, we pray that you join in wherever you are. Clap your hands, wave your hands, stand up if you need to. But I believe that God is deserving of all the praise, all the glory and all the honor. And so again, we welcome you to our Watch Night 2020 service. We pray that you will be blessed. And I pray that you begin even now considering all the wonderful things that God has done for you and that deep within your spirit, you can declare, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. God bless you. Happy New Year.
you give God a hand of praise? Can you give God a hand of praise tonight? Will you bless the Lord with me? I will bless the Lord at all times. And that even means on a Thursday night, for his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My brothers and sisters, we have so much to be thankful for. Regardless of what's going on in the world and regardless of the uncertainty of what tomorrow may bring, we can still bless God right now. We can thank God. Thank God on this Thursday evening. Thank God for bringing you through 365 days. Thank you for the ups. Thank you for the downs. Thank you for everything that God has kept you from, that God has led you into. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Let's just give God a hand of praise tonight. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that still sits on the throne, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what people can or cannot do. We serve a God that can. Yes, we serve a God that can do the miraculous. We serve a God that can open up doors. We serve a God that can close doors. Will you keep praising God? Come on, you can't get tired now. You can't get tired as we leave out of 2020. You ought to be able to give God more praise and more praise and more praise because God did some things for you in April of 2020. God moved some things for you in June of 2020. God made a way in September of 2020. And on December the 31st, God is still making a way. God has been my best friend. God has been my elder brother. God has been food when I was hungry. God was water when I was thirsty. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise tonight. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Listen, I just want to take this moment and again thank all of you, not only for tuning in tonight, but for supporting our ministry throughout this year. We have gone from a physical service to a virtual service. And by the grace of God, it's been seamless. We've had some humble beginnings. For the first few months, it was me on a laptop in my home. And every now and then we have a singer tune in with us and bless us with the selection. And then on our church anniversary, the second Sunday in October, we made our way back into this house of worship to continue celebrating and worshiping God. We reunited with the band and with our, our virtual voices. And we've been able to present these worship services to you on a regular basis. And so now we've come to the conclusion and I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for all of your support Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the text messages that have been sent not only to me, but to all who are part of this worship service tonight. Thank you for the emails. And most of all, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for the gifts that have blessed this church, that we can continue to do what God has called us to do and also make a difference in our community and the world. And so my brothers and sisters, I wanna remind you, let me just share with you that this coming Sunday, this Sunday, uh, January the 3rd will be the very first service of 2021, and we want you to join in with us. And to those of you who live in the, in the surrounding area of East Orange, we want to encourage you, you can stop by and pick up a communion uh, this Saturday. This Saturday, January the 2nd, from noon until 2 p.m., I believe a few of our deacons will be out front in the administrative wing, and they will provide you with communion, not only for this month, but I think they'll give you some for for February and March if you ask for it. And so we want you to prepare your hearts and your minds uh, for our very first service in 2021, January 3rd at 10 a.m. Also, listen, if God has placed it upon your heart to give a sacrificial offering tonight, a thank you offering unto the Lord, you can do that. Simply go to the GiveLify app and whatever it is you decide to give to the Lord for this last year, for this last day of this year, in terms of offering, just, just go to give Lafayette and, 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 and give. But whether or not you give, I want you to give God some praise tonight. That's what I want. I want you to praise God from now until the clock strikes 12. And then on into 2021, keep praising God because we serve an awesome God. Be with you tonight on this New Year's Eve. I have so much to be grateful for. This year was very difficult for all of us, but I have so much to be grateful for. Um, but the one thing I really wanna thank God for is using me in spite of me. 
every Wednesday morning, I'm able to get on the call with you and God gives me a message that we can share together so that we can learn a little more about him so that we can be closer to him. And I'm so grateful to God for that. He uses me in spite of me, but he also lets me connect up with each and every one of you every Wednesday morning. And for that, I am so grateful. I hope that this new year will be an amazing year for each and every one of you. I know God has blessed me. Many of you know my husband and he is now stable with his heart. Yes, he's still on the heart transplant list, but God has been good and he's blessed him. My mom is doing great and my son is here home with us and he's doing great. God is good. He has kept us throughout this very difficult time and I can't be thankful enough. So I thank him. I thank him for again, using me, but I thank you for every more, every Wednesday morning connecting with me and just so that we can go to God in prayer. Uh, and sharing a message together. I love you. God bless you. Happy New Year. And I know that it's going to be an amazing year for all of us. Bye-bye. Grace and peace, Messiah family. It is a good day to be alive in Christ Jesus. As we come upon the end of 2020, if it was a story we had written with our own pen, it might have been a lot different than the way it actually turned out. But what we can know is that God has been with us every step of the way. So as we enter, as we leave 2020 and enter into 2021, we can do so with a great expectancy and a knowing that God will continue to walk with us. Uh, a lot of things changed for me this year, loss of job, loss of important relationship, but I've gotten much closer to God. And so I am grateful for that. If we look at uh, the tough times from a different lens, we'll learn something about who God is and who we are in him. And so I pray that those of you that have suffered loss, uh, that you have found comfort in the Lord. I pray that as uh, we move into this new year, you do so trusting that God is with you and that he has great plans for you. So happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. God bless you. Good evening, Messiah. I am First Lady Shalonda Owens, and I would like to start out by saying Happy New Year. God has been so great to all of us this year um, because we are alive and in the land of the living. Uh, when I think about how God blessed me this year, I just want to thank him for my life. Um, beginning of uh, March, um, when we were dealing with COVID, um, my, I had COVID, Pastor Owens had COVID, and it was a difficult time, but God has saw fit for us to see another day. I am so grateful uh, to be alive, and when I think about 2020, I think about faith. This has been a walk of faith uh, to get up every day, to go to work, uh, to do our daily activities. Uh, we can't do anything without faith. And so I'm thinking about that song, that old gospel song that says, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet. Oh, 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 I won't turn around. I come this far by faith. And so I'm just so grateful for the faith uh, that I had during this time that I still had and the faith that remains and endures. And so as we go into 2021, I just want to thank God for faith. I want to thank God for you. And I'm praying that we continue to move forward with God in faith into this new and awesome year. God bless you all. Are you grateful? I'm grateful. Are you grateful? Are you really grateful? Then give God a hand of praise. We're going to hear another selection. Our virtual voices are going to bless us with the sermonic selection and then following that, we'll have the last message, the very last message for this year, 2020. God bless you, amen.
for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go on and on and on about your word. I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart.
Amen. We thank God for our virtual voices. We thank God for you, my brothers and sisters, tuning into us. We thank God for this final night of 2020. I am, I'm in a casual position tonight because this message has been on my mind for quite some time. Not so much the message, but just knowing that this service was coming up and that a message needed to be preached. I want to be transparent just for a couple of minutes because um, each and every Sunday, pastors across this country and this world have a responsibility of sharing a message with the congregation, with the members, with the body of Christ. And by the grace of God, we are fortunate enough to receive a word from the Lord and then share it with you on our days of worship. But this service, this message, is, is something that I've never experienced before in my time of preaching. Never have I felt so much weight in coming up with the word. Never have I wrestled with what will I preach about? What can and will reach the masses? I mean, I've thought about it in the past, and you know, all preachers, we struggle with trying to, to hear from the Lord and find that word, be led to preach that word. But for this watch night service, with all that we have encountered this year, I literally was saying, God, what, what am I going to preach? See, I guess if it was a normal service filled with folk, there would be an excitement. There, there would be an enthusiasm flowing through the pews up to the pulpit. I would be excited to be preaching a word. But uh, it's an empty house besides those doing the video and audio and the band and the singers, it's just us and you in your home waiting to hear a word from the Lord. I don't know if you've ever considered how much pressure that can be. We talk about people performing under pressure-filled situations and coming in clutch. Truth be told, for me, Christ is the only one who was clutch. The athletes and and, and those people we admire, the, the icons of this world, generations past and even the current generation, that's not clutch. Clutch is hanging on a cross. <laughs> clutch is coming out of a grave. That's, that's clutch. And so what I'm struggling with um, is no different than probably what others deal with on a, a normal basis. But tonight it's different. Because I want I to share a word with you that will hopefully encourage you into this new year, but then also give you pause to reflect. Reflect upon what God has done with us and in this world in 2020. And so after much prayer and consideration, God led me um, to this passage of scripture found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 27 verse 1 from the New Living Translation, it reads this way. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Wow. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? God, we thank you. Thank you for this year. Thank you for January the 1st all the way through December 31st. Thank you for this moment in time. Will you settle now our spirits? Will you give an, an alertness of mind and body right now? Help us, God, to spiritually tune in to your word. Oftentimes when we watch from home, we are distracted by so many things. God, will you quiet everything around us so that we might hear, 
we might reflect, we might ponder, we might praise. Thank you for this opportunity, God. I don't take it lightly or for granted. And I thank you for even empowering me right now to preach this word. We've all gone through so much this year. But at the end of this year, one thing remains, and that's you. Bless everyone who watched this. Those who are watching live, those who are watching later on demand, bless them, dear God. May we be encouraged. May your name be uplifted. May we be empowered to move into this new year. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. So tonight, for the last message, 2021, or 2020, I should say, I want to preach from this subject, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. Um, yesterday, as I was watching the evening news, I saw an earthquake happen right before my very eyes. The country of Croatia, there was a mayor in one of the local cities who was having a press conference. And around him were citizens of the city as well as the reporters. And um, in the midst of the mayor talking, and I'm not sure what the mayor was saying what he was saying, but in the midst of this, this press conference, an earthquake occurred. And at first I just, I was looking at the things surrounding the press conference. I watched how the trees were shaking and, and some of the building and the debris from the buildings began to, to make its way into the atmosphere. A plume of dust made its way across the press conference. Then I hit the rewind button. I wanted to see it again. And I wanted to look at the faces of those persons who were literally experiencing an earthquake. And as I studied and stared at that clip for at least two or three times, I couldn't help but to focus in on the mayor and it was a, another woman to his side. In one instance, everything was, was expected. Everything was going according to plan. And in the next moment, the earth started shaking. And, and, and he was experiencing something that he did not expect. And after, after rewinding it and watching it for at least the fourth or fifth time, I said, that's what 2020 was. That's exactly what we experienced. Not for, because that earthquake lasted no more than 30 seconds, but for close to, to 10 months. <laughs> that's what we had to deal with. At that one moment, we are, we are standing. We are, we are sure of, of our todays and our tomorrows. We are planning. We are excited about a new year, and then, in the blink of an eye, the world around us began to shake. Some of you still haven't regained your balance. 2020 has left you topsy-turvy even now. Some of us have regained our balance, but, but we're now preoccupied with the cleanup of all that has happened through this year. I realize that's 2020. And I'm sure if, if I could speak Croatian, I'm not sure what the language is, if I could interview that, that mayor, I'm sure he would say, I didn't see it coming. That's what, that's what I'm feeling. That's, that's where I am right now. As I look back upon 2020, I didn't see it coming. It's been so many memories I've been, I've been uh, replaying in my mind this year. And, and one, of my, one of my rituals going into the new year is that I would always, wow, I would always spend time with one of our sisters who's gone home to be with the Lord. 
Sister Tiffany Green and I would always confer before watch night. And we plan out not only watch night, but we'd also plan out the New Year's Day service or the first service of the new year, the first Sunday service. And um, last year, Tiffany and I conferred, we got together uh, between watch night and, and the first Sunday in January. And, and by brainstorming, I wanted to come up with something that, that would speak to our congregation for the entire year. And so I entitled it Vision 2020. I was all set. I laid out my plans. I laid out my, my sermon titles and topics from January through December. Had it all set. Each Sunday, according to each respective Sunday of each month, I had a topic all set. I was going to talk about spiritual growth and, and, and financial growth. I was going to talk about personal families and health. I had it all laid out. At the beginning of January 2020. And then by the third Sunday in March, God had taken my little plans and my little vision and balled it up like a piece of paper and tossed it to the side. And God said, this year, you will, re you will have a new vision. This year, I'm going to show you some new things. And didn't God show us some new things? The roll is too long to call, but, but I just need to talk about a couple of them. God showed me that, that worship will take place in different places. I, you know what? I've been asking people throughout the month of December. I said, if, if, if God would have told you 10 years ago that there would be an entire year that we would not gather in the house of God for worship, y'all call me, you'd be like, you crazy. There's no way. Listen, I recall uh, early part of March, Shalanda said to me, um, we need to go to the grocery store and stock up on some stuff because the city and the world is about to shut down. I said, you must be crazy. There ain't no way. She said, Broadway is about to shut down. I said, there is no way. No Broadway shows. I said, let me tell you something. New York City and Times Square will never shut down. God said, I got something for you. Listen, uh, mid-March, I, 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 I contracted the virus. God had to show me, and I'm laughing about it now, but listen, Every time that I had gotten sick before, I had a remedy. I had a cure. Listen, I, you, you give me a chest cold, oh, I got some Vicks Vapor Rub. I'm putting it on my chest and my feet. Some of y'all know about that. I put some socks. I, I said, let me just put this on, get in the bed, and in the morning, I know I'm going to be all right. That next morning came and went. Fever was still there. Well, if Vicks didn't take care of it, I listen, give me some Alka-Seltzer Plus. Didn't work. Give me some NyQuil. <laughs> didn't work. God, God showed me that there are some things that you can't fix. There are some things you cannot cure. There are some fevers, good God Almighty, that you can't break. Who knew? I didn't see it coming. Listen, I didn't see the coronavirus coming. I didn't see the shutdown coming. Listen, I didn't see the scarcity in our grocery stores coming. I, I, I could have never imagined. It was like Armageddon. It was like, like some after war effect that I go into a grocery store and the cupboards are bare. That I can't even get a loaf of bread. That eggs wouldn't be distributed or delivered until three days later. What is going on with the world? God showed me some things. God showed me some things that I knew about that the world didn't necessarily know about. God allowed the injustice of this world, the injustices of our country, to come center and front in front of the whole world. Eight minutes and 46 seconds, we'll never forget it. 
that the world watched a man die. All because of passing a counterfeit $20 bill. Black Lives Matter took on a whole new meaning. My brothers and sisters, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see that our democracy would be threatened in the manner in which it has. And here's the kicker, not by the Russians or the Chinese, but by our own people. That there would be some narcissistic leaders in D.C. that would be so self-centered that they would sabotage our democracy for their own personal gain. In the history of our country, especially in my lifetime, I would have never imagined it. I didn't see it coming. And so now as we close this year, that's all I kept saying to myself this week. God, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. And for many of us, as we close out of the year, um, we're constantly replaying and repeating that in which we didn't expect or anticipate. We keep talking about the virus. We keep talking about the injustices in, and the prejudices in our country. We, we keep talking about those who are lacking and wanting. We keep talking about those who are self-centered with selfish motives and gains. We, we keep replaying it over and over. And as we close this chapter and get ready to open up a new one, God has taught me a few things. And Proverbs 27 verse 1 helps me understand it. Don't boast about tomorrow. Don't, don't talk about tomorrow for you do not know what a day will bring. I know that's right. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see all that we experienced. I didn't see it coming. But, but I don't want to leave out of this year on that note. Here's what I did see. Listen, how many of you all uh, are, are quick to talk about uh, stuff that you witnessed? I saw it. I saw it happen. A couple of months ago, I passed it around to a few of my friends. There was a lady who was being interviewed. Uh, there, was a, there was a shooting that took place in her, in her neighborhood. And, um, and I'm not sure. You know, it always seems like, why did they put the mic in front of that person? And there she was. You know, two teeth missing in the front, head wrapped up. She said, I saw it all. I saw what happened. And she began to tell folk what happened. It was, it was comical. And she told her story. And I thought about her as I was preparing this text because I want to be just like her. God has given me this opportunity to stand before you on the last night of this year. And, and instead of the pressure of trying to figure out what, what sermon will I preach and what points will I have? And how will they segue into an example and how will I make it applicable God just said, tell them what you saw. There are some things I didn't see coming, but there are some things that I saw in 2020. I want to share with you, and hopefully we can leave out of this year praising God. What did I see this year? I saw God. Yeah, I saw God. What, what, what I love about this year, and I know, I know some of you are, are saying, what is there to love? But but this is what I've discovered. Out of, my, out of my 16 years of pastoring, out of 25 plus years of preaching, out of being saved well over 45 years, I've talked about God and I've, I've said I've seen God and, and I've preached about God and prayed to God. But this year I saw God. And I don't know if I would have seen God in the manner in which I did had I not gone through this year. And so sometimes, my brothers and sisters, instead of you complaining about what you've gone through, instead of you talking about uh, uh, the pain and, 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 and the torture that you had to go through and the agony that you dealt with, sometimes you ought to be able to recognize that if I had not have gone through that, I would not have seen God this way. It's only those who've gone through the furnace 
that can declare that God can bring you out of the furnace. And so this year, I declare that I've seen God. I, I've witnessed God move. I've watched God heal my body. I used to talk about it before that God is a, is a healer, but I've experienced it. Because when I ran out of remedies, God had its own remedy. God is a healer. I watched God drop a fever. I watched God raise a body. Yeah. And I'm grateful this year because I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. This year I've seen God. And if there's anyone watching tonight that you can, you can think about or think back on 2020 and realize that God showed up this year and you knew it was nothing but God, you ought to give God some praise. You ought to be able to declare on the last night of this year, I saw him too. Yeah. Testify in your own home. I saw him. I saw God. You know, as, as little kids, do you know, ki kids need an image. Ki kids need, kids need, they need some kind of, 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 of something, some kind of figure. They, they need to lay hands upon it. So, so oftentimes kids um, um, uh, can't necessarily believe in God or really understand God because they can't see God. But as we grow up into adults, we understand that there are some things we cannot see, but they exist. And if you don't believe me, coronavirus. <laughs> I, if I could see it, I'd tell you, I'd take a two by four to it. Still don't know where it is. Still don't know how I got it, but it's out there somewhere. And I was reading an editorial, a Christian editorial that said to those who don't believe in God because you can't see God, but you subscribe and believe in the coronavirus? Yeah. I wish I had time to preach tonight. Because, because the coronavirus exists, yeah, and you can't see it. But it has an effect on you. And so I'm here to testify tonight that God does exist. And you may not be able to see God, but there's, there's an effect that God has on you. Is there anybody here that can declare that God has an effect on my life, that God has affected my life this year? Listen, I didn't see it coming, but I've seen some stuff. I've seen God this year. And also, my brothers and sisters, I, I've, I've seen love. Yes. I synced it. That's what she said. I synced it. I've seen love. Can't tell you the number of times that I've quoted John 3, 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. But I've seen love this year with hands and feet. I've seen individuals struggling, struggling to live. And I've seen first care responders, doctors and nurses put their own lives at stake and at risk to take care of somebody else. That ain't a job, that's love. I've seen hungry folk, needy folk, be blessed by those who didn't even know them. I've seen love. Yes, I thank God. Because God showed up, but love showed up. And I love it. I love love because this year God turned it upside down. Because usually love is shown on what? You call it. You call it what we got. Valentine's Day, we show love. We show love on Mother's Day and Father's Day and anniversaries. But this year God said, I'm going to show you what real love is. Gosh. Yesterday I was, I was driving up Bloomfield Avenue. Um, traffic was backed up. Although the lights were green, traffic was inching along. I was frustrated and couldn't understand what, what, why, was, why were we moving at a snail's pace. And as I inched up closer and closer, I saw something that blew my mind. There was a bird, a seagull I believe whose wing was broken, but was still trying to fly. 
And unbeknownst to the seagull, it was in the street. And this seagull is trying to flap with one wing. And it build up enough strength in one wing just to elevate a little bit and collapse back down. But it was slowly making its way across the street. So I'm already blown away by this, this one wing seagull trying to, trying to fly. But then there was a man who was in stopping traffic, protecting this seagull so that it could make its way across the street. And I said to myself, he's going to get hit, not the seagull, the man. He's about to lose his life trying to protect a one-winged seagull. Gosh, and it wasn't too far as I drove past that I had to pull over and give God some praise. Because God said, that's love. What, the seagull? The man? No, God said, that's what I did for humanity. That's what I did for somebody who's watching this. That even though you had two wings, you could only use one. And you weren't getting as far as you thought you could. The truth was, you should have been dead. But by the grace of God, I sent my son to protect you from getting run over to help you get across the street. Is there anybody here that can thank God tonight that God sent a protector your way by the name of Jesus? That's love. I've seen some things this year. I've seen God this year. Uh, I've seen love take on all types of forms. But also I've seen, and I think the virtual uh, voice is saying it earlier, I've seen God make a way. How many of you lost your jobs? How many of you who had pay that was affected? Some of you right now are waiting for that second stimulus check to come through. These have been hard times. These have been times, these are unprecedented times. But through it all, God made a way. You know what? We always talk about God in worship. Yeah, I know the Lord. We always talk about love. But God put it in action this year. And we also talk about faith. Everybody got faith on a Sunday morning in a packed church. The question is, does your faith work when problems happen? God had to show me that this year. I can preach millions of sermons about faith, but until it's put into action, till I know that it really works, it's just a word called faith. And some of you discovered faith this year. You realize that God can make a way. You, you, you put God to the test and God came through with flying colors. My brothers and sisters, if you've seen God, if you've seen love, if you've seen God make a way, then you ought to give God praise. The proverb, the, the writer of Proverbs says, and so therefore, I'm not going to boast about tomorrow. I've learned some lessons from last January up until now. I really don't know what tomorrow brings. After the loss of so many loved ones and and family members and church members and extended family members, I, I, I don't know who will be around tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. But here's what I do know, is that while I am here, while literally, while I am here and I have breath in my body, I will give God praise. I will think of the goodness of the Lord. And all that is, I refuse this year. I refuse next year to focus on the negative. I refuse to be fearful of what I think might be coming around the corner. I'm going to live. And I'm going to praise God in my living. 
When God allows me to see another day, I'm going to declare, thank you, Lord. And even if the doctors diagnose me with cancer, even if the COVID they says is incurable, even if there's some setbacks in my lives and, and some setback in my finances, I will still declare the goodness of the Lord. Because what I'm understanding is I cannot boast about tomorrow, but I can boast about heaven. And I don't know what tomorrow on this earth will bring, but when this body has been dissolved, I've got a new home. He's prepared that for me. And so my brothers and sisters, we celebrate tonight. We rewind our minds from January and roll them all the way through December 31st. Yeah, you can talk about the negative if you want, but I refuse to. I want to talk about God. I want to jump ahead to tomorrow. I don't want to plan my vacation for when the vaccine comes. I want to focus in on right now. I want to focus in on this moment that I have right now, and I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing me through. Thank you for showing me what real love is all about. And thank you for putting feet to my faith. It's no longer a word I'll throw around, but it's a muscle that I'll exercise. It's something that I want to build up to become strong. I've learned this year that real Christians don't, don't, don't necessarily wear big hats and nice suits on Sunday morning. Real Christians ain't carrying the big Bibles, and it's not about where they sit in the house of God. Because this year, you couldn't come in and sit anywhere. Now, real Christians are those who have endured this year and can still declare, I'm rolling with Jesus. To God be the glory for the real believers watching tonight. To God be the glory. To those who can celebrate God in the midst of the scarcity, in the midst of the virus, with the uncertainty of a vaccine, to God be the glory. My brothers and sisters, I wanna take this moment and wish all of you a happy new year. If you're watching this video, that means there's a likelihood that you're going to see 2021. I'm not going to stand here and talk about what it's going to look like. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to stand here and talk about what we're going to do. I've learned my lesson. All I know is what I will do is I will praise God. I I'm going to take that scripture to heart. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. In good in bad, in difficult, even in times of joy, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And I'm going to encourage those who don't know Christ to get to know him. That's my assignment. That's your assignment as we move into this new year. And that's customary at this church. On a watch night service, we would close by this time and we'd be counting down to midnight and folk would be getting on their knees. Listen, you can do that. Truth is, you can really get down on your knees now. You know, some of y'all couldn't get down on your knees because you had, you know, you was too dressed up. Didn't want to get your stuff dirty, but ain't no telling what you're wearing right now as you watch this. So wherever you are, let's take a moment. Let's go to God in prayer for the last time of this year. And at the conclusion of this prayer, this will be the end of our Watch Night Service 2020. Again, on behalf of the leaders, the staff, the members of Messiah Baptist Church, to all of you, we, we wish you a, a happy new year. We pray that this year you'll discover God in an entirely new way. Look forward to having you join us this coming Sunday. We back on it at 10 a.m. Until then, be blessed as we close in prayer. So God, we thank you. Thank you for the things we didn't see coming. So often, Lord, 
in the past, we have relied upon our own experiences. We, we, we were our own counselors. We, 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 we prepared and planned well in advance. But this year, Lord, you did something different. You shut down our plans. You altered our course. But yet we are here right now. We want to say thank you. Thank you for the reset button. Thank you for the reset button that was pushed upon this entire world. Now, God, it hasn't been comfortable. For some, it's, it's been an irritant. For others, it's been nearly crippling. But we thank you because there's a purpose. The reset gives us an opportunity to reset our steps, to reset our way of living, to reset our way of loving one another. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for your son Jesus that was born. We're still celebrating his birth. Thank you for the power of, whole, of the Holy Spirit that, that's in all of us who believe. We thank you. From January 1st to, to right now, God, December 31st, we thank you for every day. Had some good days. Had some great days. We've had some difficult days. But through it all, you've been with us. And so we want to thank you for your presence. God, I want to take this moment and thank you for those persons who were with us but are no longer here. Thank you for their life. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for the relationship that they have with you because we now know, Lord, they're in a better place. Would you heal our hurts? Would you become now that company keeper? Because someone lost a spouse, someone lost a child, someone lost a sibling, dear God. Someone lost a coworker, someone lost a friend. We're trying to put the pieces back together, dear God, but it's hard. Show up, God, in the midst. In the midst of this trial, in the midst of this sadness, and fill us with love and joy. We are grateful. Grateful for their lives, but most of all, grateful for your son, Jesus. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for your love. Thank you for making a way out of no way. And when the world says it can't be done, we're going to object and says, yes, it can. All things are possible if you just believe. We believe in you, Lord. And we believe you've got great things in store for 2021. And so, Lord, I ask your blessings upon every person in every home, to every head that is bowed right now. God, cover and keep them. Will you please bless this church? Bless every member both physical and virtual. Bless our newfound friends by way of YouTube and live stream. Thank you, God, for just giving us this opportunity to share this good news. Now, Lord, we don't know what's around the corner. We're not boasting about tomorrow. Not sure what it's going to be filled with, but right now, we're going to say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. And thank you for the life that we're living right now. Continue to have your way in and through us. And may you get the credit and the glory for all we say and do. We thank you that we close out this 2020 year and we praise you for 2021. We ask your blessings upon us each and every month, each and every day, God. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. We look forward to having you join us this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. Until then, God bless you. God keep you and continue to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Amen.